One day, the doctor said, Pedro, we have to do the last, ex the last exam to actually check your leg. As we were there, I remember that the doctor, he did a very awkward face when I came out and he looked at me like, and he said, Pedro, we have to do the exams again. And I was like, oh, what's going on? And I went again and I came out like 20 minutes later and he was looking at me very confused. And I remember he said, I have to call another doctor here. And he took his phone, he called, and a doctor, another doctor came to the room. And suddenly he called another doctor and another doctor came to the room. And I'm sitting down in the, uh, at the, the room with them and there is now five doctors looking at me and all looking to my exams and like, something's <laughs> and I just could hear like the mumbling. <laughs> And I remember the doctor looked at me and said like this, Pedro, do you feel any pain in your leg? I was like, no, I don't feel any pain. Uh, and he was like, because we can't see you tomorrow. When I was three years old, so my parents, they had the brilliant idea of giving myself to the Lord. Uh, so I grew up in a Christian family, everything fine, everything beautiful and perfect for many years. Uh, and for all this time, like working around and like just traveling with my parents because they, they used to do ministry together, uh, I always felt quite empty and felt that I want to experience life in a different way. Uh, so when I was 15, I had a brilliant idea of start to play basketball. And I was this guy that was always tall, was like the tallest kid in the, in the school. So I was like, I want to play basketball. I want to be a pro. And I started to play with my friends and some teams started to actually pay attention. I was like, okay, I'm actually good in this. Uh, so I was invited to play the team. Uh, what's normal, like when you start to play with people, you start to play with other guys, you, you start to actually be involved in different atmospheres. And being with these friends that are not Christians and they, they didn't have any connections with Jesus at all. Uh, I started to experience some different things. So I started to actually go around to parties. I started to actually go around to drugs, uh, drinking quite a lot. The only thing I was looking for was for fun and actually for me to have a story because I, I always thought that like being a Christian was so boring and I actually need a story for me to tell to people. And I always said in the back of my mind, I will go out and do whatever I want. And after one day I come back and I have a beautiful story for me to tell to people. And that was like how I was feeling and what I thought was important for me. Uh, with my parents not being able to pay a lot, of, a lot of attention on what I was doing, I just start to actually go deep and deep and deep in sin. So I started to actually meet some girls and after I started to drink, more and more and have some opportunities to actually try and smoking and things like that. And one day I hurt my foot uh, in the train. Uh, I actually hurt it and I felt something very awkward and my leg was not okay. So my, my parents decided to take me to the doctor. As we arrived there, the doctor told me, you should go out of the room because I need to talk to your parents. And I was like, oh, something actually very wrong happened here. So the doctor came to them and said that I have a cancerous tumor in my left leg. And that, for me, as the 15 years old, was a massive shock. And the only thing I couldn't think was like, okay, can I still play basketball? Because I have a cancerous tumor now. And I didn't really want to pay attention to that because when you're 15, you just want to pay attention to your future. So I was like, oh, if something happened, I actually can just put a, a fake leg and st still play. I was like, let's do that. Uh, so I didn't really thought really well what was a cancerous tumor. And as the doctor started to talk to me and my parents, I started to understand that things was very, very serious. And they told me in the, in the possibility of actually amputating my leg. As I grew up in the church and every good kid that grew up in church, I said to my parents, I need Jesus. I need to be healed. So I went straight to church and I started to talk to my old pastor and I said, you know, I have a cancerous tumor and they told me that they have to amputate my leg. What do I do? And my pastor said, Pedro, we as a church, we're gonna pray for you and we're gonna commit ourselves to pray for you every week. So they started to pray for me every single week. And as these months were, were passing, I was keep going to the doctor and checking and there was, there was no progress. And they told me, Pedro, we actually have to amputate your leg. We have to amputate your leg. And this story was just going uh, at the point that I was very okay with that. And I was like, okay, I actually will have to amputate my leg. And this is my story now. Uh, and as the, the story was going, one day the doctor said, Pedro, we have to do the last, ex the last exam to actually check your leg. This was a massive machine where they put me inside and this machine put me inside and they have to check my bone. Uh, as we were there, I remember that the doctor, he did a very awkward face when I came out and he looked at me like, and he said, Pedro, we have to do the exams again. And I was like, oh, what's going on? And I went again and I came out like 20 minutes later and he was looking at me very confused. And I remember he said, I have to call another doctor here. And he took his phone, he called, and a doctor, another doctor came to the room and 
suddenly he called another doctor and another doctor came to the room and I'm sitting down in the st uh, at the, the room with them and there is now five doctors looking at me and all looking to my exams and like something is <laughs> and I just could hear like the mumbling <laughs> I'm like what's going on um, and I remember the doctor looked at me and said like this Pedro do you feel any pain in your leg I was like no I don't feel any pain uh, and he was like because we can't see your tumor and I was like what we can't see a tumor. And it was, was so interesting because on that moment I was very, very excited and I was like, oh my gosh, I was healed. Oh my, something supernaturally just happened here. And it was so crazy because I always saw God working powerfully with my parents and with other, other people in the church, but I never actually had the deep experience with the Lord where, where God is healing me. Uh, so I always heard about uh, miracles, I always heard about these big things, but I never actually experienced that. But now was happening to me and I couldn't deny because I like was in the front of me and they said, you don't feel any pain. I was like, no, I don't. They said, we don't have to amputate your leg because we can't see the tumor in you. And I remember like, they said, go home and after come back next month and we're going to do, new some, uh, do some new exams. I said, okay, fine. So I remember walking to the car with my father. My father was super quiet and my plan was, okay, I can go back and play. And I was all right, I will go back to my life, I will play, I will do this, this, this. And as we drove, my father dropped me at home and I went to my room and I was alone at home. And I remember I sat down at the, at the bed and I started to think, okay, I will call my friends, I will say that I'm good now and I can start to play again and I'm going to this game now. And our team was in the final four, so I was like, okay, this is awesome, we're gonna play, we're gonna win. And I remember for, in, in one second, I've just felt so empty. And I was like, wait, something is actually wrong with me because I was just healed from a cancerous tumor. For six months, people have been telling me that I will have to amputate my leg, but I'm, I'm not really getting like, why I'm feeling this way. And I remember on that moment, I closed my eyes and there is this divine appointments that always happen, right? And I remember in my room, there was a window and I looked to the side and there was a Bible. And when I took the Bible, I just opened and was in Isaiah and was say like this, I'm doing a, a new thing. Don't you see it? And I remember I just I just really memorized that phrase. I was like, I'm doing a new thing. Don't you see it? And that started to burn in my heart. And in that moment I started to cry a lot. And I said to I remember like saying this very, very deeply to Jesus and saying, Jesus, if there is a God, if there is a, a real Jesus there, if there is a real relationship uh, outside of these uh, earth relationships, I really want to know you. I really want to go deep with you. And I promise you, if I'm doing this for you, I will go 100% in. I'm a really, I will be a real team player and I will actually give my life for this cause. Uh, and I remember in that moment, I just felt a big love coming to my room. Uh, it was something that I couldn't stop crying. I, I really did, didn't understand why I was crying so much. And something really, well, I was just feeling that my, my scars and my, my wounds was actually being healed in that moment. Like things that I thought that was healed from a long time ago. Sometimes small things that I learned inside churches or I saw inside churches that hurt in me, comments from people that hurt in me and all these things in a moment just disappeared and, and just became like a small thing. And from that day on, my life was completely transformed. Of course, I had to do a choice. I have to actually choose new friends to come around. And I still have now these friends that used to be in my team. We, I still hang out with them when I go to Portugal and we have a good time together. But I really felt God saying to me on that time, it's time for, you, for me to do a new thing in your life. So I connected with new people. I really get deep inside the Bible and I started to really study the Bible and praying really believing that there is a God there and my life was completely transformed and the results of that was after that God actually gave me the opportunity to lead worship in many many different places and because I was healed I had the opportunity to, to share my testimony with other people and all these countries that we've been we have been so many healings and people have been like just encountering God through that and mm -hmm. that's it wow now you mentioned worship yeah. How, how did that come about, right? Because here's a kid who is is not really thinking so much about God and yeah. is thinking about a, all a bunch of other things. You have this healing moment, yeah. this surrender moment. 
you become a worship leader. How did but, how did that happen? Yeah, from from getting the healing to now serving God in this way. No, I love that. So the first thing was when I was a kid, my mom was always a worship leader, and she always inspired me to be a worship leader. She always said, "Pedro, I will teach you how to sing. Pedro, I will do this." And she, I, I remember like seeing my mom being the worship leader in our church. She used to be the worship leader, and after she became the youth worship leader for a long time, so she was teaching young worship leaders to grow with the Lord. And on that, I always learned a lot. A lot of instruments because I was around her all the time. And once God healed me, I was the first thing that I felt that I should do was actually found a place inside the community where I actually could serve. And I was always involved in the worship team, but I never took them very serious. I was always involved playing the church, but I really never took worship as a, a serious calling in my life. And in the moment that I took out basketball from my life, uh, I felt that like, God, the only gift that I have that I can offer you is my music. And I was was very easy with music, like super, music always made sense for me. So as we as I started to work and play in the churches and being invited to go to some different places, God started to put some songs in my heart. I started to lead worship in more places and start to songwrite a bit more. And yeah, now the day now I'm a worship leader, I just lead, uh, lead worship around with my friends and my opportunity, like I use this opportunity is actually to connect people with the Lord through healing. Wow. What was your response to you, uh, from your mom as <laughs> she saw you pick up this gift and even just saw you uh, just follow God? What, what was the response mm. from your parents, from the people around you mm. as they saw you uh, make this decision? Yeah. I think the most powerful thing was something I heard from, from one friend that was one of my best friends. And he came to me and said like this, you really changed, right? You're not faking this. You you really changed. And I was like, mate, I actually changed. He And he was like, but why? I was like, I've been the happiest that I always like I never been like this in my whole life and I actually I'm super happy and like my mom now she's super proud because she's like oh my son is a worship leader uh, but this just created something inside my family as well that was the opportunity of me worshiping with my parents so now we have moments that we will never had if I didn't do this choice so I take sometimes I'm driving around my mom's house and I take my acoustic guitar and we sit down and I just sing with her the songs that she used to sing to me when I was a kid and the powerful divine encounters that we have with the Lord inside her house is something that's super precious for us uh, Pedro uh, we didn't talk about this at the start but uh, if you could tell us where are you from exactly what is your mm. background Awesome. So I'm from Brazil. I grew I uh, born in Brazil in a city called Goiânia. When I was seven years old, my parents, they decided that they want to move to Portugal. Uh, Brazil wasn't their home anymore, so they felt God was calling them to Portugal. So we moved to Portugal. My parents got very involved in the church in Portugal. I grew up there all my life. When I, After I was healed, I started to travel around with them uh, in different nations, leading worship and actually just connecting with them uh, and connecting with different worship leaders all around the globe. And now I'm here in the UK as my own base. So I love this place so much. <laughs> yeah, that was my next question. You're in the UK, yeah, right? And so God obviously has done so much. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, right? Mm. And and what God did there of mm. bringing you all the way to the UK now being your home. How, yeah. how did that happen? That's crazy. Uh, I used to be part of a ministry that was called Levita da Casa. That ministry was quite an awesome ministry in Portugal. And we used to lead worship all around the country. And one night specifically, I remember I was in my shower and I heard God saying, it's time to stop. And I was like, it's time to stop. And I remember really fighting with God on that time and saying, why it's time to stop? Because everything is going well in my life. I'm working, my family's here, my wife is here, her family's here, everything's going so well. So why should we stop now? And God told me, I'm giving you a land of kings and queens. And on that time, I was very confused because I was like, what does that mean, Lord? What does that mean? And in a miracle way, God directed us to Leicester. That's the city that we came to the UK. And I came and I ended up in a city that has a super different culture from my own culture. Brazilians, we love hugs. Uh, here in the UK, hugs is something that you, with, with a good relationship, they are developed, but it's not something that you can do straight away. I love hugs, I love big hangouts in my house, and that's not the culture uh, in England. So I had to actually learn that, and my, my church is an Anglican church, so once I arrived, it was super different. It was like a big building like this building here, super different, like super traditional, and 
the worship team going and people encountering God. And I was like, how is crazy? Like this building is so old, looks like a different church and people are encountering God. And on that connection, I met a man uh, that's my pastor and he made me an offer if I would like to, to work for the Church of England. And yeah. And I accept, and that was when the start, the things started to make a lot of sense. Why God was bringing me to the UK? Why God was calling us as a family to the UK? And I'm in the best place that I could be. And honestly, feels like that all my life, every single experience that I had, every single thing that I learned was for the season that I'm living now here in the UK. So there was many experiences that I learned in Brazil and Portugal that I would think like, I will never use this. And here in the UK, I had the right opportunity and the right time for me to use in the Church of England. What is that that why mm. of, of why you're here in the UK that you believe God has brought mm. you here? I felt like the first thing was like, I felt God was calling me to to bring passion. I'm a, I'm a very passionate guy about Jesus. When I tell my testimony to people, I always I always share that, and there is always faith in the room. And I'm, I'm, I believe I carry the fire of the Lord wherever I go. I say to people, like, if I take my acoustic guitar and I just start to sing, I believe something flow from us. I believe something will be released to the atmosphere. And when, once I was started to understand what we carry and how can we actually use that for the Lord, uh, my heart was really burning for the UK. And I think the why God bring me here was to be part of a big revival and a big movement that will happen in the UK. We already have seen like small steps of this happening and yeah i really believe I'm, i have a little part of the on this beautiful calling that he has mm. pedro who is jesus to you oh uh, many people will answer that jesus is the best friend and i love that and i would love to say that jesus is my best friend but i i love to say that jesus is my anchor so he's the one that when when he's there like no matter how bad is the wind no matter how bad is the waves I'm 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 on the same place with him, and I know I can trust him that he will hold my my boat, and that's Jesus for me. Like, and all my life is all these uh, highs and lows, like all the time going crazy because I'm eight or or zero. I'm not I'm never four, just so I'm like black or white, never gray. So I like to be very intense in everything I do, and Jesus is this anchor for me where actually holds me and say, Hey Pedro, no matter how is the wind. Don't worry, I'm here holding you. No matter how big is the wave, don't worry, I'm here with you. Mm. So Jesus is this for me. For people who are listening to your testimony right now, who maybe haven't fully made that decision to follow Jesus, maybe they're in a um, seeking uh, a career in basketball, yeah. or maybe they're seeking a career in something else, and, and they have that conviction that this may not be what God is calling them to do. What is a word of encouragement that you can offer to those who are watching your testimony mm. right now? I love that. I think if I could say something to Pedro, on that ears, a long time ago, I would say to him, have a try, really try, because mm -hmm. I believe that Jesus never will waste the opportunity to meet you. Jesus will never waste the opportunity to be with you. And if you give him a chance actually to just come and open his heart for you, you will see things that you never saw before. You will encounter a love that you never encountered before. And that was what happened to me. Wow. Pedro, can you just speak in in your native tongue to the people, to the people in Portugal or people who speak Portuguese? Mm. What can you tell them right now in in your native tongue? Mm. Galera, se você ainda não teve encontro com Jesus, se você ainda não teve oportunidade de se entregar totalmente para Ele, cara, pula e vai vai em frente. Não existe nada mais precioso do que o amor de Jesus. Não existe nada que vai te mudar mais do que o amor de Jesus. E no momento que você dá uma chance para Ele, para entrar no teu coração, a tua vida vai mudar completamente. Então se entregue a Ele, procure Ele e você vai encontrar.